This is MXUX. I wanted to do this presentation on the Tesla winner, just like a Bitcoin winner. We have a Tesla winter. Coming up on this next call, uh, the next Q2 earnings, I think uh, everybody should be aware of what's what the situation is and um, where we're at. Anyway, I'm calling this a Tesla winner. And let's just start. I'm trying to explain the drop in revenue and must recent actions here. Um, I'm calling it Tesla winner, like a crypto winner. Uh, I'm going to go through uh, some uh, basic macro information, uh, some close, closer Tesla information, some information on charging, and then end up with a summary. Um, Right now, the consumer uh, in the USA is beat beat down at all levels. Now, now the spending contraction has gone from low to high income. So basically, everyone is is belt tightening now. And, you know, uh, this is the macro environment. All vehicle sales, ICE and BV, are down. And everyone's talking about hybrid sales being up, but uh, if you if you take a Google view of this and Google Maps view and pull back, the hybrid sales are, are really just a blip. Uh, but they are outselling uh, BEVs right now, and I'm going to try to explain that in a minute. Uh, the present status of Tesla is Tesla cars are competitive. They're at competitive, you know, price levels, higher mid-level. Uh so Tesla's price without discounts it, it, it is competitive. You know, with the discounts, definitely competitive. But at this time, third-party insurance costs are, are making Tesla uncompetitive. The, and there are high insurance costs on a Tesla. And I think it's um, some insurance companies taking advantage and some other things. But in any case, be that as it may... Tesla does self-insure, but these high insurance costs remove most financial advantages from owning a Tesla. Fuel, maintenance, repair costs, they all go out the window because the insurance is so high. So in the end, uh, the only difference is charging, and um, that's the issue. Um, now, I want to try to define some of the things that are making up this winter weather, Tesla winter weather. And uh, I have uh, a couple of um, videos on this. There's a Hertz black swan. Uh, Hertz is dumping uh, 20,000, I believe, one and two year old low mileage Teslas on the used market. They're selling these cars at 50% of original cost. Um, now, I'm not saying everybody's buying these instead of buying new Teslas, but these are also warping the used market in general for used BVs, but certainly for Teslas. Also, people are seeing uh, one-year depreciation of, you know, 75% of their new purchase. So this Hertz Black Swan event is damaging uh, Tesla sales. And I don't think there's any two ways around this. You can see my other videos for um, uh, more detail on this, but uh, you just can't deny it. Um, and I don't see anyone mentioning it but me. But I think that um, personally, that uh, this is a bigger factor than anyone's taking account of. Um, the macro economy is on a razor's edge. Okay. Recent studies show only seniors are spending now. You know, the YOLO life. Uh, Carnival Cruise Line stock is way up because seniors are cruising. The um, seniors own their own homes, and they got a mortgage locked in at 2% usually, you know, something like that. Uh, they got the T-bill and chill at 5 5 and a quarter percent They're making 5 and a quarter on their money. They don't have to risk it in a stock market. Um low housing costs, and, you know, they get the Social Security COLA raises. So this is the sector that is spending right now. 
And maybe a, a self-driving Tesla is just what they need. <laughs> but this is what our economy has come down to, really. Um, and this is based on my research, but I think it's, it's fairly accurate from what I've seen out in the world in restaurants and so forth. So now when we get down to the cause of inflation, I've done some research on this as well. We have physical, not monetary inflation for the most part, okay? So in other words, usually inflation is based on banks lending too much money at low rates. That's not what this inflation is based on. This is a fiscal inflation. It's based on federal interest payouts on bonds and a deficit. This is what's causing inflation. The high, the T-bill and chill mentality, the five and a quarter percent risk-free return. People are pouring money in the T-bill and chill. This is what's causing the inflation. Um, and and Fed rate, rates, uh, uh, rate hikes has, has actually raised these rates, okay? So the Fed rate is inverse with this type of inflation. That is why, uh, and I know that the inflation report just came out today. This is 515, and it shows some improvement, but not enough to change the Fed rate. The, the Fed rate is inverse with this type of inflation, okay? That, that's the thing right here. And what you have is fiscal inflation. And, and this is also because the nation's debt is equal to GDP right now. Um, so we have to grow the economy. But this does not give me much hope of any kind of rate cut soon because these rate cuts are not going to have the uh, effect that we want. So there has to be workarounds on the interest rate problem and vehicle costs by Tesla. And I just want to add another thing that's causing the Tesla winter. You got meet Kevin. You got Ross Gerber. Okay, these guys are making social media videos and they are you know, saying terrible things about Elon Musk, about his leadership, about Tesla. Um, now, Meet Kevin has admitted, uh, I made a comment on a, on a video one of these guys, man, I, go, I bet these guys are shorting. Meet Kevin has admitted shorting Tesla uh, after the fact, after the, making the uh, comments. Ross Gerber said he's cut the position at, with his fund on Tesla, um, as well, I'm sure I, I, I would be willing to bet he's shorting too, but you got to understand everybody sees these guys kind of as trusted sources. These guys are Gordon geckos, you know, greed is good guy. They, uh, you know, they're traitors. The truth doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Facts don't matter. Okay. They're, they're pumping a trade. They're pumping a short. They're pumping a call. They're pumping a buy. They're pumping a sell. So the problem comes. Uh, the, the reason uh, these are damaging uh, Tesla sales is because people see these guys as trustworthy because these were both, you know, uh, Tesla backers, Tesla fanboys. And they're not seeing the short side of their comments. And I think that their actions are based on uh, on on personal on a personal vendetta against Elon Musk because he's made comments certainly about Ross Gerber. I believe he called him an idiot, and I think he's blocked me, Kevin, from his ex account. I'm not sure, uh, but you know you can't discount social media, and negative news travels 20 times as fast on social media as positive news. So I'm going to say that these guys are also part of the problem. And I think certainly retail investors uh, and, you know, the general 
buying public that might be seeing these companies and saying, what's happening with Tesla? This company is going to go under. I'm not going to buy a car there. Very damaging these two guys. I understand Meet Kevin has just bought back into Tesla after, you know, calling uh, Elon Musk uh, uh, a hopium salesman. I mean, these guys, again, Gordon Geckos, and they are hurting Tesla and Elon Musk. And I, I do think that's part of the Tesla winner. Now, I just want to talk about the bigger picture here. Now, one of the, one of the problems, uh, and BEV sales are down overall, but I, I just want to give my opinion on why a lo one of the reasons they're down anyway, a couple of them here. You know, a flood of bad BEVs poison the consumer well, okay? When BEVs, BEVs were all introduced. Uh, there were endless recalls. You know, you got the Bolt with the battery calls, the Mustang BEV. They got some relays in there that kick in, mechanical relays that kick in when you accelerate. They were welding themselves shut. If you look at any BEV being sold now and do a, mil a millimeter of research into recalls, you can see all of them have problems, either software problems, battery problems. Uh, drivetrain problems, you name it, uh, except for Tesla. And Tesla really is the only functioning, functional uh, BEV out there, in my, uh, in my opinion. Anyway, uh, I'm just going to go over this spiel here. Premium uh, non-Tesla BEVs that came out uh, are really limited to home charging use. You know, they have big, slow-charging batteries, like the Benz ESQ and the F-150 Lightning and the Hummer. There's no way you can road trip with these cars. It, it takes, you know, hours to charge an F-150 Lightning on a, on a third-party charger on a highway, okay? The CEO did a road trip. He said it was impossible in the F-51, uh, F-50 Lightning, 150 Lightning. Um, you know, the same goes for the Hummer. You know, uh, you know, three hours stopping to charge the Ben ESQ, Ben's ESQ, same thing. So, and this is on public chargers, if available and operational. Okay, so all of this came together, and although a lot of people have had good experiences with BEVs, there's enough bad stories out there to you know poison the well, in my opinion. Um. So now, it, and it depends on if, you know, you know, the public chargers, most, I mean, this is a really spotty system we have of public chargers. They don't work. A lot of them, the cars don't meet up with them. I'm going to put a video clip in here if I can get it. Um, the, the, and the public charging program, program uh, that uh, Biden has proposed is, is being scaled back. So really... The other half of the story is, is the charging and um, really these new vehicles that came out, I mean, you'd pay $100,000 for a F-150 Lightning when it came out and you could only drive around, go get milk with it. You couldn't take it anywhere. You couldn't do anything with it. This is what I'm talking about. And this involves charging and the charging network. Now, of course, Ford now is going to use the Tesla charging standard, as is many, as are many others. However, I don't think that's been implemented widely because everybody's cutting back their BEV uh, production. But anyway, the, this this whole charging mess, uh, you, you know, uh, if you're going to get a uh, BEV and you're not going to get a Tesla, the, the the only choice is a hybrid, really. Because the, the, the charging situation is untenable with the public public charging, okay? Unless you just want to use it, you know, as a daily driver around home and charge it at home. You know, don't take a trip up to San Francisco or anything with it. And most people want to have that capability. So that, and, and a lot of um, people that wanted to buy a press Tesla couldn't, couldn't afford the payment uh, and the insurance, and, and they were for, forced uh, mid-market to, to choose other cheaper BEVs. 
which also really are not functional using public charging or for road trips. And this is due to poor, the poor public charging. I mean, I'm going to, again, I hope I put that clip in or I will of, uh, you know, a, a charging night where we're the, they're down to 8% of charge. They pull up to a charger, not working, won't register the car, won't charge the vehicle out in the middle of nowhere, middle of the night, you know, anyway, people are getting rid of, of these non-functional BEV cars, the non-Tesla BEVs. They're resale market and their depreciation uh you know has collapsed because again not well thought out i mean even even sandy monroe said his wife had a horrible time trying to charge their rivian in third-party chargers so i mean the public's view uh is tainted on bevs in my opinion and, uh, you know, Tesla's been tarred with this brush unfairly. Now, since we're talking about, ta about charging, let's go into Elon Musk uh, firing the supercharging team. This is the big story of the week here. Um, in my opinion, and there's been some news on this, some reporting by Re Reuters, um, Musk was making a statement to all management. I am a decision. I am the decision maker, you know, like George Bush. And what I say is final. This is what he he's saying through his action. Uh, he fired, according to Reuters and uh, AutoLine, uh, Musk fired the head of charging, who did challenge Musk on his higher level of staff cuts. Evidently, this. Uh, female had um, done a 15% cut and, and Musk wanted higher cuts of 20%. Uh, rather than hearing her report on um, how she was going to do these cuts, um, she presented a, a, a planned program expansion of the charging network. And I, I am willing to bet she was, you know, telling Musk, we can't do that, you know, disagreeing with him. And Musk summarily fired her and her entire staff. And a small number of people have been rehired. Now I'm going to go over in a little bit how critical these staffing cuts are, although they are cruel and, you know, life is cruel. But uh, I want to pause a little, little in it just a bit. We're going to go over why these staffing cuts are bad. But anyway... Musk uh, had it with her. He said, that's it. You're done. Get out. You're fired. So when you want 20% cuts and uh, the person presents you a plan to expand the network, of course, there's a disagreement. Anyway, sounds like somebody wanted to have the last word and Musk decided it was him. Um, now, just a couple things people aren't talking about here. The third parties, Ford and Aptera and these others that agreed to use the Tesla charging standard have mostly stopped or curtailed BV manufacturing. So it's not like, you know, they have to expand these chargers because of all these additional vehicles that are coming online, at least not yet. I mean, Ford is basically shut down F-150 uh, production. They have a new, you know, GM is shut down, you know, the, these are not uh, going to be needed to be expanded for that purpose anytime soon. And also, in general, BV, V sales, including Tesla, have stalled. As, as I mentioned earlier, all, all car sales have, ICE included, you know, basically because of uh, interest rates and insurance costs, okay? Uh, but uh, these are two reasons I think Musk can say that he did not need to expand the charging network at this time. Now, I have an idea here, and, and I don't know, and everyone seems to have overlooked this. Is there a charge? Is there a change in the, uh, in the Tesla charging strategy? Um, you know, their goal was to have full road trip usability. They have that. Okay, Tesla basically has that in the United States. Uh, I think probably in, in a lot of other places too. 
Now, I think uh, Elon Musk and uh, Tesla, I think Musk, his plan is is to move towards uh, no need for home charging or, or as it was stated in another study, no need to own a garage to own a Tesla. Um, future, future charging advances are, are misunderstood. And this is, this comes from the Cybertruck. Um, the Cybertruck has 800 volt supercharging and GM also had, uh, developed this as a prototype. I don't believe they're using it in any of their cars. I'm not sure. Uh, but what they do is they split the pack into two 400 volt chargers so they could use it at, uh, lower, uh, lower capable chargers. And they, and they put the two packs together to run the car or when there's 800 volt charging capable. Anyway, when you go to this 800 volt structure, you, you really have a 15 minute charge. Okay. And, and these are in vehicle changes. These are not changers at the, at, at, at the chargers at the charge points. Okay. So, and, and these are all in the, in the, uh, in the cyber truck, which also is set up for wireless charging. Everybody is overlooking this. Tesla is working with a wireless charging firm. I mean, uh, I, I do believe wireless charging is going to be part of the uh, robo uh, cyber taxi and uh, per perhaps the cyber truck in the future, or maybe all Teslas. Uh, anyway, so this is a potential new strategy using the existing charging network uh, with a new 800 volt vehicle architecture, which would make the existing system rather than making it bigger make it more efficient but i just wanted to put my two cents in for the supercharging team i think they have time to rebuild the team i think you know again uh demand is probably mostly being met by the existing system but these changes may you know this may be in part due to must thinking on charging overall now, if, if we move down here to the next page, now, this is why Musk has to have complete control. You can see down here, you got blue is revenue, okay, and this is quarterly, okay, from 23 to 24, March 23 to March 24, and the orange is net income, okay? So, low revenue, 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 revenue going up, right? Uh... Income, 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 income going up. Now you look at at the last quarter here, March twenty four, revenue down, income down. Okay, this is not good. Okay, and um, I think we're roughly having an upward trend here. Certainly. Uh, going into 23 and then all of a sudden fell off the cliff with the, then this is the Tesla winner right here. That's it right there. Uh, and that's what we're in right now. The Tesla winner. Now, if you look at, this is a, uh, this is a, the, the revenue and so forth. This first column is 24 and this is the year over year change uh, from a year ago. From, so this is March 24, and this is the change from March 23. Revenue is down 9%. Operating expenses, and so the cuts, right? 37%. Net income down 55%. Net profit margin down 51%. EPS down 47%. EBITDA. Uh, earnings before interest taxes, blah, 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 down 35%. These are very bad numbers. Okay. This is, this is, you know, I have later in the presentation here, this is a plane crash. This is a plane going down. Okay. It's in a, it's in a, it's in a death spiral. It's in a, Okay. And you could say, well, they got $14 billion in reserve. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I forget who was the Senator that said it. a billion here, a billion there. And pretty soon you're talking about a lot of money. You know, they just spent 2 billion last quarter on, uh, on AI, which they need, but look at these numbers. This is why Musk is cutting. Okay. 
This is, uh, and, and we're going to go through other things he's doing to control this. And I just, just to reiterate this, we'll, we'll just go with another one here. Cash flow. Here's your cash flow. This is March 23, a year ago, and this is today. Now we went down, we went down, we had some CapEx here. Uh, Cybertruck likely, prep and so forth, uh, Model 3 refresh. And then the cash flow's up, up, and look at this last cash flow down here. Now again, we had the mass of AI spending, but we also had a drop in unit sales. Okay, and we have to invest in AI to stay competitive. The unit sales are the variable, the, the, the uh, dependent variable here. You know, the, 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 let's just look at these. Uh, over again, this is this quarter, and this is a year ago, and this is the change. Net income. This is net income. This is this is from sales, okay? Wait a minute. Oh. Down fifty-five percent. Fifty-five percent cash from operations. Down ninety percent. Ninety this is a, this is an airplane in a power dive. You know. Uh cash from investing, and this obviously involves cashing in some Bitcoin and stuff in the previous quarter. Down 105%. All right, cash from financing is up 184%. I think this is for their power, power banks, part of their energy system, the battery packs. Um, net change in cash, down 2 billion. Okay. Or, well, 2,000%. I think it's, I think it's 2 billion. 2,000%. Uh, cash, negative. 2,000. 3,000%. Yeah, now, 4 billion down, 4.73 billion down. 3,000% cash outflow, free cash flow down 11,000, 11,000%. Are you kidding me? And again, we could have expected the CapEx spend on AI. But the bottom has fallen out of sales. Okay, when you lose half your sales, you know that that. Uh, all right, this is what Musk is doing to 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 remedy this. Uh, short term, Musk is cutting opex by cutting staffing by twenty percent across the board, and this looks like without exception. Okay, so I mean. Um, this is, you know, the quickest way to affect the bottom line, okay? And uh, it's sad and it's cruel, but it has to be done. Yeah, Musk is also stopping new CapEx. All the new factory projects are canceled. Mexico, India, forget it. Not going to happen. Not for the foreseeable future. Uh, I think there's an expansion planned in, in Texas that's going on, they're going on with. But other than that... All these new projects, forget about it. Not going to happen. And you want to know why they canceled the Model 2? That's why they canceled the Model 2. They were going to build it in Mexico. Um, also, Tesla is moving aggressively to increase sales. Uh, they have a two ninety nine dollars a month lease, which is, you know, really good. And they have 0 .99 financing going on right now. There's also free charging offers. And Tesla prices are falling. You know, every day you hear about Tesla prices going down $2,000, $3,000. And, you know, the tax credits and everything else. But, you know, we have an economy where only senior citizens are spending money. As I said, maybe full self-driving will be a draw for senior citizens. I could see that. <laughs> anyway. This is this is also uh, and and I would say this is just in the nick of time that uh, they're launching uh, uh, full self driving, and they're gonna they're gonna launch in in China the cyber taxi and it's gonna be a proof of content of concept, and they're gonna get the insurance figures uh, to show that it's safer than human drivers and perhaps this will enable lower insurance rates uh, for Tesla or enable them to more easily insure everybody 
uh, that owns a Tesla. Uh, so anyway, um, this is a, a needed new revenue stream. And it will create demand for full self-driving sales worldwide, okay? Once everybody sees this proof of concept, okay, which is what it's going to be, uh, the uh, full self-driving is going to take off. And it's also going to boost the stock price, okay? And um, certainly the presentation coming on 8.8 and... Um, you know, I see Waymo taxis driving around my area driverless all the time. People that think this isn't going to happen. I'm sorry, you're, you're mistaken. You were mistaken. I do believe Tesla has the easiest to scale model and also has a fleet that's outfitted to do it on the road right now. So I think everybody else, again, I'll, I'll say this, is two years behind implementing a real robo-taxi fleet. I mean, Waymo's doing 50,000 rides a week, they say, but, you know, they they have uh, a limited number of vehicles. Their vehicles are $150,000, $250,000 to cost each. Um, just moving on to the summary. Uh, macro, the Federal Reserve is killing the economy. They're incompetent. You know, they're, they're fighting a... a, a Fiscal inflation with monetary policies. It's not working. And they refuse to admit they're wrong. The federal government is not doing its job, and car insurance is an example. And I and I went over this before. The thing is, the car insurance companies, they had a lot of risky drivers driving. No one was driving during COVID except people with the highest risk profiles that are getting in terrible accidents. Car insurance said, look, we got to raise our insurance rates. Nobody thought COVID was ever going to end, I guess, at that point. They got the okay to raise their rates to astronomical levels. Well, the conditions they raise these rates under no longer exist. These rates should be rescinded. Also, you know, the government is not uh, doing its job regarding fuel prices. There's collusion. I mentioned this in the last video. Collusion with the frackers and the Saudis, maintaining high energy costs. And I'm sure that this is going to go on and on. Um, and the federal government is just not doing its job as far as addressing inflation. Now, they either need to cut the deficit, uh, which is hard, which either means cutting benefits or raising taxes, or they need to grow the economy. And uh, they need to, to get, uh, you know, people to work. And they're, again, they want unemployment high. That's for monetary inflation. We got fiscal inflation. We need to, we need to grow GDP. We need to grow out of this uh, so that GDP is, is bigger than the national debt. Well, anyway, the federal government is not doing its job. Uh, ICE OEMs have done a terrible job launching mainstream BEVs. That, that everyone has been a failure. Look, just think about it. Look at them. Look at the Lightning for a perfect example. I mean, I know a guy. He had a Lightning. He loved it. He had it. He kept it for uh, less than six months, traded it in. Now he has a gas-powered Sierra. You know, below 40 degrees, the truck loses 50% of its range. No heat pump. I mean, that's just one example. Mainstream B, uh, terrible, uh, OEM's done a terrible job launching mainstream BVs and have spooked the public on the BV value proposition, hurting Tesla sales. Now, Tesla, they have tarred Tesla with this brush. It is not accurate. Tesla really is the only true BV out there that's commercially viable and uh, usable, okay? Also, we have this Hertz Black Swan. This is also killing Tesla sales, okay? And hurting depreciation and refund. So we've got high interest rates, high car insurance, bad BVs out there, bad social media coming out. We've got this Hertz Black Swan. We've got revenue down, what, 55%? What Elon Musk is doing right now Elon must pull the company out of a negative cash flow crash dive. That's what he is. He's in the plane and, he, and, he, and, he, and, and you know, he's taking some flack in the wings and he's going down. Okay? 
He's got to start throwing the extra seats out the windows and stuff and pulling back on the stick. That's what he's doing. Okay. And hopefully, you know, by the time uh, the next quarter comes up in June, um, he's going to be able to re to reverse um, some of these uh, metrics and um, uh, at least uh, get us to the point where we're flat and not in the red. And I think that would do wonders for the stock. And there's going to be all kind of excitement over full self-driving. But anyone, any, anyway, uh, that's my take on it. Seems like Musk is on the job. You know, people say he's not doing the job. I think he is doing the job. The point is, um, this economy uh, is falling off a cliff. And uh, they have to adjust the company to this uh, uh, reality. And the full self-driving is going to be a big boom. But you um, have to right size production and so forth. That's the answer. So I uh, hope you liked the video. I think uh, it's um, optimistic. I think uh, Elon Musk is making all the right moves. I do think he's a competent. You know, Elon Musk has been CEO for this com of this company for years. He's an experienced CEO. And he knows about stock prices and he knows about balance sheets. So I, I think we have to trust his judgment. You know, meet Kevin and Ross Gerber are talking about getting him out of there. This is foolishness. This, believe me, I was a headhunter for a while. And to replace Elon Musk right now, oh, my goodness. It would be worse than replacing Steve Jobs at Apple. Okay, this is MXUX. I hope you like the video. Good luck in the market.